Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's a rainy old morning here in Sydney. It's stopped just for the moment. If it starts raining again, I'll have to duck for cover. But uh, it's a mild morning and we're heading into spring and I just can't wait for these cold mornings, these cold dark mornings to replace, to be replaced by more milder and more lighter mornings where we can see the sun, we can see the uh, skyline changing before our very eyes. What I'd like to do today is go on a journey like we normally do on Jim's, Jim's 5am club <clears throat> and go through a book summary, one of many that we've been able to accumulate over the past couple of years. And today's book summary is entitled Becoming Flawsome, Becoming Flawsome by a female author going by the name of Christina Mand Lack Lackian. Christina Mand Lackian, who is a lady who originated in, in Estonia. She was a public servant and uh, found herself, believe it or not, in New York and needed to reinvent herself. She got married and uh, she reinvented herself and continues, like all of us, to need to reinvent ourselves in order to fit into the world, to surf the opportunities, but also to grow and develop and become the best version that we can of ourselves, but at the same time becoming the best authentic version of ourselves and being who we are rather than being a false representation, um, a figment of our imagination or an expression of other people's imaginations and standards. This book is all about how to tap into and to live um, authentically, to live imperfectly and to accept it and to appreciate it and to know that at the end of the day we are all different from each other there's no doubt about it we're all different from each other uh, but more importantly what we need to appreciate embrace and leverage is that we're different for each other we're different from each other but the purpose that we're different from each other is so that we can be different for each other. So the first key point that we need to accept and to understand and to ponder is the differences that we have, the uniqueness that we have is uh, special and it's for, for ourselves and for others. And we don't need to become a clone of everybody else. We don't need to look, behave, act, think like everybody else, else we become, I guess, boring and uh, we, we are no longer our authentic selves. The other thing that we also need to appreciate, and the author accentuates this as well with her story, is that things just happen in life and we need to take each of those stages, each of those platforms and sit back and think, you know, what can I do to make the most of this opportunity? What am I here to learn? What am I, you know, what am I going through? Why am I going through it? And how am I going to do it and be uh, successful? Or how am I going to be and to express my success as opposed to somebody else's 
example of what success should be. And life will push us. The author here reminds us that life will push us in different directions. And it's important to ensure that as the uh, person in charge of the rudder, as the captain of our lives, that we allow our lives to be guided with the help of God, of course, to be guided in the way that is best for, for us and a way that enables us to be authentically us. We need to discover ourselves throughout our lives because we need to discover ourselves first before other people discover our, our gifts and our abilities but it all starts with us and we will discover ourselves during the toughest moments of our lives something to consider and to contemplate that the tough times are the times that enable us to define and to etch our character, our characters. And to also be aware that uh, each and every one of us have a mask. The Japanese are very, very big on this whole concept of the masks that people wear in order to fit in to their families, to their societies, and into the standards that other people have created for us. But the important thing to understand is that in order to live an authentic existence, we need to peel off that mask. We need to build the courage to peel off that mask that we have. Not only the mask that we have for other people, but also the masks that we have for ourselves. You can't be authentic if you're trying to be somebody else. You can't be authentic if you're living the life that is just going to make your parents happy, your grandparents, your uncles, your aunts, your work peers, your boss, your partner, your children. You need to live authentically in order to live a fulfilled and a productive life. And that authenticity and that productivity and that uh, fulfillment will only come once you discover yourself and know what you're here for and what your mission is. And each and every one of us, as we know, has a different calling or callings in life. God wants us to achieve and express our unique calling based on the skills, based on the gifts that he has granted us. But we also need to understand that with growth and development comes a certain amount of darkness. Because personal growth is all about becoming a better version of ourselves indeed. And society is very showy and very exhibitionist. And what we see now, what we experience now with social media is that people want to put out there, want to push out there to their, their social circles and to the world an image which ticks the boxes of success in various ways. But what it does is that it creates a version a marketing version where people are just far too polished, far too over the top, which leads to industries of plastic surgery, of augmentation, of body art, and all of these things. So people uh, are pushed to become exhibitionists to the point where they change who they are, they put on all of these masks, the masks of uh, body art, the masks of big lips, big tits, big asses, um, facelifts, uh, big muscles, 
and all of those other things so that they can appear much better, much better, much more polished, much more perfect than what they are. And I remember reading a book many years ago where the author talked about this whole fad of augmentation and this whole fad of people becoming bigger, better and greater than what they actually are. And they say that what people do is they overcompensate for things that are weaknesses. And in the book Psycho-Cybernetics, the author Maxwell Maltz, I remember saying that he would, and he was a plastic surgeon, and he said that he would have women come to him and he would augment them, he would change their faces, change their noses, their chins, their cheeks, and all of these things, and turn a duckling into an absolutely beautiful, beautiful swan. <coughs> and when the time came for the reveal, where he would peel back the bandages and have them in front of a big lit up mirror, the reaction was interesting to say the least. Because what would happen is that after all of this money, after all of the effort, after the masterpiece that he had created, the physical masterpiece that he had created, the patient, the person who saw themselves in the mirror, still saw, still were able to see the ugly version of themselves. They could see the, um, you know, the version. And this is where the author said, and they were still unhappy, they were still unfulfilled. And this is where the author would say to them, you don't need a plastic surgeon. You don't need me. What you actually needed was a psychologist to help you understand, appreciate and accept who you are because every person is beautiful. It's not just the hair, the face, the nose, the tits, the ass and all of the other things. It's the whole package that people need to be able to understand and to appreciate and to accept. So we need to be careful that we don't get carried away with social media. We don't get carried away with this whole wave of looking and appearing much better than what you are. And we need to appreciate and accept ourselves for who we are and not to be forced in to the pressure of becoming too obsessed um, of how we look and how we appear to others and to ourselves and to accept what we have as God's gift and to put it to good use I guess is one way of looking at it. We need to rediscover the art of loving ourselves and loving others and to know that uh, love is blind. What a lot of people do when they fall in love, what a lot of people do when they find another partner is they tick a few boxes, a few of their key boxes and then what happens is chemicals kick in and we become blind to the other aspects. We turn our eyes away from those things that may annoy us under normal circumstances. And that's why they say love is blind, but it is a chemical phenomenon that occurs um, to all people. So um, what happens is you start seeing faults in others, you start seeing the faults in yourself. Um, but that's what reality is. And what this book is all about is appreciating and accepting the faults that other people have, the faults that we have, and to know that we live in a world which, which is not perfect. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok isn't the real world. 
um, Twitter isn't the real world in terms of opinion. And we need to know that real people um, are not perfect and we will never be perfect. We, um, we will uh, strive where we can to achieve improvement. We will make progress, but to be obsessed with perfection, to be obsessed with ticking the box is always going to lead us to discomfort and unfulfillment because it doesn't matter how many boob jobs somebody does, how many lip fillers and all the other things that go with augmentation that somebody does, sooner or later they're going to get older, the body is going to change, gravity is going to take over and we need to accept that this is what happens to people, this is what happens to all people depending on their genetics and the more you fight it the more unhappy you're going to be. So we need to deal with faults, we need to do, deal with flaws and that's the purpose of this book, now becoming flawless, flawsome, sorry, flaw, flawsome, now being awesome with your flaws. And to understand that, you know, do we have to learn to live with it or should we, would be, should we be continually trying to eradicate it? Society makes lots and lots of money stooging people into trying to eradicate their flaws. But the important thing from this author, the important thing from a Christian perspective is to accept things, to embrace things and to know that you're different from each other, for each other, and not to be overly obsessed with some things that we can't change, and to just live with them, deal with them, grow with them, and focus on the things that we can change. Um, because this is reality. You've got to understand that the definition of success in today's society is flawed. It's all just a figment of our imagination. It's all about marketing. Now, the people that you see, the things that you see and you admire, are just marketing hype. It's just marketing spin. It's money that's been thrown at something to give one or give us the illusion that others are better others are prettier, others are greater. But what we know and what we realise after time is that when you start meeting all of these so-called celebrities, these social media celebrities, you find out that they're no different to us, no different to everybody else. And in fact, they've probably got more problems and they're probably more messed up than all the other people around them. And for that reason, and that reason only, they need to overcompensate with expensive cars, with, with expensive clothes, with um, circles of friends that they can't really afford to hang out with, but do so anyway to keep up with the Joneses, to keep up with the Kardashians. And it's all just, you know, influenced with the weapons of marketing and it's not reality we need to understand and to appreciate once again this is one of the key points that comes from this book that it's okay to be a normal family it's okay to have the issues and the problems and the challenges that we face because everybody is going to have problems everybody's going to have issues and you just need to accept deal with them on a daily basis uh, there is no person who has lived the same life we've all lived a different past we're all living a different present a different now i am here you're somewhere else and we're all going to live a different future so even if you want to look like a kardashian or to be a kardashian you're not going to be able to achieve it. 
you need to look and be and to express your own authentic self and find your niche in terms of friendships and people who appreciate you rather than trying to be um, a clone of some other clown. And at the end of the day, we're all recovering perfectionists. Yes, uh, it's nice to try and be perfect, but the reality is it's impossible to be perfect in an imperfect world. Nothing is ever going to be as you want it, as things are always changing, just like the skyline here is dramatically changing, just as we're here talking, it's getting lighter and lighter, and before you know it, it's going to be daybreak. So, um, the bottom line, according to this author, is that we need to strive for fulfillment, to be true to ourselves, and not to compromise ourselves, uh, just because things are popular. I remember my mother always used to tell me, she said, son, I want you to hold on to the things that we have passed down to you. By all means, supplement and complement these things with other things. But what you must never do is to swap them out and to exchange them for other things just because they are popular, just because they are showy, just before they look, just because they look better. <clears throat> because who we are, who we represent, has come from a long line of good people who have struggled in life and who have passed on these lessons to us. And we need to keep our Christian background. We need to keep our Christian values. We need to keep all of these things and to be the strong link in that long chain to be able to pass it on to future generations and not to swap it out just because others are doing it. To be strong, to be committed and to be the one who is the magic glue that holds the future generations together. We need to be careful that we don't follow the rules and um, of society. Now, at the moment, everything seems to be about pride, trans this, trans that, um, uh, the yes vote, the voice to the Indigenous Australians. At the end of the day, my responsibility is to be the voice of myself, of my family, and not everybody else, and to be able to do what is right and not to succumb to what is popular and uh, what other people uh, are trying to push and trying to foist upon us. Because what will happen is you'll end up selling yourself to the devil, you'll compromise yourself, and what, you'll ha what will happen is that you'll be unfulfilled. Just because other people say it's right doesn't make it right. Uh, there is right and there is wrong and we have had the many lessons of what is right and what is wrong passed to us by people who have our best interests at heart in terms of our families and we need to take heed and to respect that because if you change what you'll find is if you're not changing for the better if you're not changing to be authentic, to be your authentic self, you'll be selling yourself short and you'll be unfulfilled because you won't be living with authentic value. You won't be living um, a life by doing things which are not God-pleasing. Because at the end of the day, the purpose of life, the purpose of a Christian life is first and foremost to love and serve God with all your heart, mind and soul. And secondly, to love your neighbour as you love yourself. 
and the clue there is you need to love yourself first. You need to take off those masks to yourself and to others and to be authentic. Love yourself and because you love yourself, then and only then you can able to express that and pass that on that love to others. So we need to live an authentic life uh, and we need to keep on to keep our um, special and unique qualities and not to fall victim to society. And I guess finishing off, we just need once again to indulge in self-care and self-love and not to become um, something that we're not. Because at the end of the day, and I love this, and I'll finish off with this point, the end of the day, the best perfume, the greatest perfume that you can wear is the perfume of authenticity. Being yourself, expressing who you are, um, accepting, uh, embracing your differences, knowing that you're different from each other, for each other, and making the most of it. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and we'll chat again. Bye for now.